Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Betrayal of Crondor. Well, last time you remember, we saved Prince Callan of the Elven Folk. We wandered a bit around uh, Elvandar, and I showed you this magic well, which was broken in the original release and became even more broken in the patch. And as I said, I was going to exploit this a bit off, off camera. And uh, you'll see we have Goref at a 178 strength, Owen at a rather hardy 160. You'll remember that Goref was in the 40s and Owen in the 20s when we started. So we should see something rather amusing the next time we have a fight break out. But uh, we're not going to go northward any further. At least not at the moment. We're going to go ahead and cut back to the west, because even though we are fairly close to the end area... <clears throat> Funny, I could have sworn I ran into this trap before, but... Now, you think you might well know, want know what you want to do with this one. Oh yeah, that one shuts that one off, and that one shuts that one off. Well, oh well. Thought I knew what I was doing, but you know what? Skin of a dragon. And we're through. Anyway, rather than going northward right away, we're going to return back to the other side of the river because there is a little mission here that we need to tend to first. Alright, so let's see how Owen, well, he's out of range, so we'll go ahead and do a spell to knock these guys out first. And, yeah, the damage we dealt, it wouldn't even show it. That's how high it is. And we just crossed back over the side of the bridge. I wanted to get to. Okay, so... Now, I could actually tackle this little quest out of order, but we're going to go ahead and play it straight and cut eastward a bit. Because you remember what Owen Gar said about sensing something unnatural to the south. Well, if we walk along the riverbed... Eventually, we should... You're getting very pixely here. And I walk all the way around to Yes, I did walk all the way around back to the path where where we start heading northward to find Callan. Okay, well, no worries there. Yeah, this is kind of tricky to find, even if you do know the general area you're supposed to be searching.
Okay, we'll go ahead and... Ah, okay, well, now I've run into it. I just ran the length of Owen's spine. Desperately, he tried to recall a little he knew of temple magic as the enemy advanced toward him. He regretted not having stu spent more time studying the text on the Mikimian gods of Death Limbs Kragma. When in seconds, there were ashen faced creatures in their midst, studying them with eyes long devoid of life. And yeah, a whole bunch of Rusalki. And even though we are hardy enough to probably survive this. And yeah, 94 damage. He one shot at that one. And thankfully, they are ignoring Owen. Now let's see how much Owen can do now. 72 damage, which one shot at that Rusalki. And the magician, 121 damage in one shot. And we see that he has an Elim's heart. But uh, yes, this was the enemy that we were going to seek out eventually, because what happens is that if you wander around the forest in the right place, you're supposed to find the very first Rusalki. And she gives you a quest to track down the magician who has enslaved her sisters and is not allowing them to rest and doing all sorts of, you know, terrible things. And we got a chest here, so... And can we get this one open? And okay, we cannot get this one open. And yet, yeah, it's really hard to spot the treasure chests in this place. Is this one we couldn't just get before? Yeah. Okay, that one's trapped. Now we'll want to save first. We did somehow manage to get into it, but there's nothing in here but Glory Hand, Elf. But hey, lockpicking did increase. So that's something. But anyway, the quest is that we are supposed to go find the Queen of the Rusalki somewhere east of this bridge. She's supposed to be right by the water, but... It sounded like distant war drums. Owen stopped and cocked one ear, a puzzled expression on his face. He was about to comment on the strange sound when a cool wind suddenly kicked up swirls of dust around him. Looking up, he was terrified to see the sound was caused not by the beating of drums, it was the beating of a very large pair of wings. The creature landed, prepared for combat. And... Well, apparently, we are able to avoid this ambush somehow.
Okay, well, I'm going to do an edit cut while I search for the Hedru Salki, and hopefully uh, this will not take too long. Be right back. Okay. Yeah, we must have walked right past her. Or walk through right through her. Because, yeah, I swear we walked right through this point. But anyway. The Rusalki was trying to communicate. In odd language, they were somehow able to understand the Rusalki spoke to them. Do not be afraid of me. I can see that your hearts are true, and as such I will do you no harm. How do you know such things about us? I know many things. You're on a quest, are you not? Yes, we are. Can you help us? Not directly, no. Only if you would be willing to find the Mordahel spellcaster who has been perverting the will of my kin with a strange device and retrieve from this man an item stolen from me. He holds an item named after my own person, Iliam's heart. Return with it and I will do what I may to assist you. Well, we just so happen to have it. Have you returned with Iliam's heart? Owen nodded his head. He retrieved the heart and made his way apprehensively through the Rusalki. Hands trembling slightly, he placed the object in front of the creature, then quickly stepped away. You have done what was asked, and now you shall be rewarded, it said, producing a dozen packages of rations. Also, there is something which was left on the shores of this river ages ago, which will be of assistance to you in the road ahead. Please take it with thanks from all of my kin. Is the shell valuable? In ways you will never fully imagine, but its uses are many. While it bears little on that which you seek, you may yet find another thing you desire. What all of Andar? What is the best route there? By two roads may you reach the Queen of the Elidhel. If you wander the main roads, there are many hazards, but your enemies shall face you. Wander the path less traveled, and you may find a face a less substantial opponent. In this, Prince Callan may be of some assistance. Farewell. Owen scouts. Might like to keep what we have. Yeah, because she gave us a ton of rations. I'm just curious, what is his strength at right now? 188 with that swig of that. And I think we will need the rope for a while longer. <clears throat> Uh, we don't need those lockpicks. And we definitely are going to need the rations for later in the game, although we should have plenty for what comes next. Because uh, doing this quest is actual dewy purpose. The extra amount of rations it gives you will enable you to pass through the sleeping glades the hard way, should that be your desire. That is, of course, not my desire, because while you can get a little bit of treasure from the Sleeping Glades, it's really not worth the effort with what we've gotten so far. And it is doubly not worth the effort, because, well, you need to have a decent lock picking in order to get through uh, some of the treasure chests that are set up as schmuck bait. And is in fact the next river that we'll need to encounter the Sleeping Glades. And there's a dragon. And we did manage to attack it. But yeah, fascinating little note I'll talk about regarding the differences between the game here and the uh, novel Crondor the Betrayal. The novel, unsurprisingly, does not bother with most of the quests that we've dealt with in this chapter involving finding out how to go to uh, Elvandar. Instead, Pug's message says, To Thomas, the Book of Macross. And then 
most of the concern is the group, is uh, Owen and Gorov trying to find a way to get to Elvandar, but instead of having to go through the mountains, uh, they instead take a ship and then go to Kaldara, and I'm beginning to feel strange. I feel like lying down taking a nap right here. We must be nearing the Sleeping Glades that Prince Gallon spoke of. I recall he said we should remain close to the mountains once we pass North of River's Fork. We should be able to avoid the effects of the spell if he spoke truly. Right, so we backtrack here. He did say that is actually where the glade, you know, that's our goal right over there, the pathway right there, but we do not want to go there. So he did say stick to the river and head west. And then go north along the mountains, but we'll go ahead and rest up here. And just cut north. But uh, yeah, there's a very nice scene in the book. And what am I running into? Ah. Got to go around a little bit. And there is more dragons, but Owen can totally beat this guy with one swing. 116. And I wonder... Ah, Gaurav cannot get a clear shot, so he will go here. Anyway, there's a very nice scene in the book where Gorath gets to uh, bond with Dolgan, the king of the dwarves of the Grey Towers, and it's the first time that he's enjoyed being able to just have a night of carousing with fellow warriors, and he and the dwarves become fast friends, and there's a very funny bit where <clears throat> Owen makes a comment about the dwarves being up all night drinking and not seeing any of the worse to wear for it. And Dolgan says, Aye, well, a hardy constitution is a great gift of a dwarf. And Grove says, As can be attested by anybody who's chased a party of them through the hills. And everything goes deathly quiet until Grove says, Or run from a group of them. And everybody slaps him on the back and laughs, and it's great. But it's a very nice character-building moment for Gorath that kind of makes up for some of the stuff that got cut from the game when going to the book and vice versa, but uh, anyway, I digress. Anyway, here is our... Owen used the key. Opening up the splinter door on rusted hinges, they peered through the darkened shaft that led into the ancient ruins. Turned to Gorath, Owen shrugged his shoulders. So, shall we go in? Yes, we shall. And something weird just happened. The door was open. They entered the cavern, and Owen noticed how cool the air felt upon his face. Wishing his clothes were heavier, his skin thicker, he rubbed his elbows as they descended into the ruin. And with that done, we'll go ahead and close this chapter out here. And next time, we will finish Chapter 6 after going through this uh, Valhera ruin. We'll see you next time.